Okay, so let's get started. Let's all do it together and create a new project using our builder. So everybody with me, let's open our builder. I think it was all the C++ Builder Starter Edition. So once you register it with the serial number you got in the email, it's a perpetual license that will never expire. So once you register it once, you have that product forever, never, never needing to add another serial number to it. Okay, do, you, do all of you see this screen? Good. So let's go and let's click on Create a New Project, which is the third one. And as you can see, we have a few options here. Today, we're going to do console application, which is the first one. Console application, basically, what it means, that we're going to use our computer screens and keyboard to do input and output uh, operations, OK? We're going to see our results of the program on our screen, and we're going to uh, write through our keyboards, write commands, or get arguments to our program to do things. Okay, but I do want to show you other options here. We can do with the builder all of those options. We can do a control pattern extension. We can do a dynamic link library. A very popular one is the FireMonkey and a multi-device application. So the FireMonkey and the multi-device application will give you the graphical user interface component where you can in very nice and visual way drag and drop visual components like input uh, place or, or labels or submit buttons, visual stuff. But today, we're going to click the console application, and then we're going to do OK. And in this screen, we make sure we choose the C++ and OK. OK, so I just want to, if everybody got this screen, so I'm just going to walk through it a little bit, OK? So you see all of those lines that has this hash in, the, in front? Um, that's just like instructions for the preprocessor. We are not going to touch those. Um, it's, for, it's just um, in, instruction for the preprocessor. So our compiling would be fine, OK? Um, but I do want to go uh, to show you the, um, the, the function int t main, uh, this is a function. This is going to be the function that starts our program. That means when our program is compiled and is executable, once it runs, that's going to be the entry point. So when we're going to write code, we're going to write it inside of those curly brackets that you see there. Okay? That's what we're going to do. Now, a, a, a little bit more about this view, okay? You can see here on the side, um, on the right side up, uh, it's just a view to show you um, all your project files. Down there, we're not going to use this today, but basically this is a, a way to add components, different components to your project. You can add here um, visual components, um, HTML files, to add more stuff to your project, but we're not going to use it today. And then on the other side, on the top, you're going to see um, components inside of your program, things that we write like uh, objects and things like that. Again, we are just starting, so we're not going to see much there. But basically, what I'm trying to say here, that you have a lot of things in this view that can help you navigate inside your program to check your errors. Very helpful. On the top, we see uh, um, the menu, file, edit, search. We're going to use a few of them today. And as we program, we're going to learn about them. So now I'm going to go back to my presentation. And we're going to get back to this for our first program in just a minute, OK? OK. So we created that. And we saw that. Now, when we're going to save the files, there are three important files that I want to show you. And we're going to do a save in a few minutes. But basically, we have the CPP file. This is where we write our code. The H file, it's a header file. We're not going to use much of that today. But just in general, so you know, in header files, we're going to write some prototypes um, or components we're going to use, and we're just going to include it in our code. We're not going to use it today, but you are going to see it once you save it. Okay? And of course, you see the file which has a CX on it. That's going to be a file for our project. Once we double click on it, we're going to open our project in the builder view. 
Okay, let's do the first project. And the first project we're going to do together, okay? So this is like the classical first project. Hello, student. Um, so first, when we need to do a project, we need to define the idea. What do we want our product or our program to do, okay? So in this project, our program, we're going to write a program that, takes a, to, to, that asks the user, what is your name? And read the name and just print to the screen, hello, with the student name. So if this is my screen, I'm going to print out what's your name. I'm going to type in my name. Then I'm going to print out hello with my name. Okay, so what do we need uh, from the C++ syntax to use here? Okay, so we need to set up the instructions. So first step would be the program writes to the screen, what's your name? Write is going to be a command, a C++ command that we're going to use. Step number two would be that the user write the name on the screen, but we need to read it somehow. So we need two things here. We need a read command to read the name, and we need a place to hold the name, to keep it, right? So we can access it, access it and print it out, okay? So we need write command, read name, and a data type somewhere to keep the name. Okay, so what is a data type? Every program has data, right? And the data can come from different sources and hence many usages. Program gets data, store data, and use data for mathematical calculation and other stuff, right? As programmers, we need to declare about the data that our program is going to need to use, okay? So we need to allocate space to it in the program memory, okay? In C++, when declaring about the data, we need to specify what is the type of the data. Is it a number? Is it a text? What's the type of it? We need to let the, com the compiler know. Why do we need to let him know? Compiler, remember, it's the program that's going to make our program executable program. The compiler needs to know how much space to give to our data. Okay, So we need to tell it, is it a number? Is it a string text? Okay. Um, so in C++, there are five major data types. We have int to hold a whole number, integer. Okay. Um, for floating point numbers, like a fraction, we have float or double. We're not going to use them today, but just as general knowledge, okay? A character, it's only one char. One char, it's going to, it's chars that are taken from a specific table that's called ASCII table. But basically what it means for our usage today, it's going to be like a letter, one char, okay? A text string is a, basically a string, okay, which is a, a different another data type and another one that's very known and very we're going to use it a little bit today it's the boolean the boolean is a data type can hold only two values either true or false one or zero okay okay um variable declaration so how do we declare about those variables so most data in our in our program is going to call variable variable is basically a place to hold information, data, okay? For every variable, we declare its type, number, string, char, bool, what's the type, okay? And we need to give it a name. So every place in our program, when we want to do something with the data, we use the name to access it, okay? So here is an example, int number. It's a declaration of a whole number with the name number. So the int portion, where we say int, basically we're telling the compiler, you need to put, you need to make space in the memory for a whole number. Now our memory unit we're going to talk today, it's going to be byte. When I say int, the compiler is going to put four bytes. Four bytes, think about it, it's just a place in the memory to hold a number. One byte is a place for one char. It's just in general, I want you to understand that this just means when I say int, I'm telling the compiler how much space to put in the memory and what type of data is going to be there. It's going to be a number, and it's going to hold four bytes of memory, okay? String, it's going to be a text, okay? 
and when when at that point we're not telling him it's gonna allocate a certain space for it but what we're gonna see it's actually the string that we're putting okay and in hello student program we need string why do we need string why are we gonna hold in our program a name and a name is just something we're gonna type right so it's a string okay what are the read and write command that we're gonna to use today? Okay, one way of, for a program to communicate with the user is to read data and write data. Okay, so C in, C I N, it's a command to read data from the screen, and C out is to write data to the screen. So we're gonna use C in to read the student name, and we're gonna use C out to print it out on the screen. Okay, so let's look at the syntax. First, we're gonna declare the name. We're going to declare in our program, we're going to need a name. String, my name. Then we're going to see out, print out to the screen, what is your name? And then we're going to read, after we type it, the name, and we're going to keep it where? Inside of my name. So you see, I gave a name to that string. I say my name, and then I can access it in the see in and also in the see out. Okay, so now I want to do, we, to do this program with you together, okay? So let's go back here. I wanna do a few changes here, okay? First of all, do you all see this line? So SCDIO, it's a library, and it's a library that you that use in C program language, and we're gonna change this one to be something for the C++. So in, yeah, oh, okay. So instead of SCDIO, we're gonna change it to be IO string, which is basically a library that gives us the C out and C in command and more, many other more stuff, but we are telling it we're going to use functions from this library. Okay, now remember we need a string. We're going to add another line, and I encourage you all to do that as well. Um, we're going to do another include, and we're going to write string dot h okay and inside here we're going to write our program so let's see what uh, what is it that we need we're not going to change anything here so I want to point out again you see those curly brackets we need them because this is basically how we tell the compiler this is the scope of our program and you need to execute whatever is inside. Okay, so first thing, let's declare about the name. String my name, okay. Oh. Then let's do, what, what was the first step that we wanna do? We wanna ask the user, what's your name? So we're gonna use the C out command and we add those two arrows here because this is the syntax, okay? These arrows give us the option to concatenate different things in the output. So basically, I'm gonna write to the user, what is your name? And in the end of every statement, so this would be a line of statement, I'm gonna put a semicolon. The semicons then the compiler, that's the end of a statement, okay? We have to put this there. And if we don't put the semicolon, we'll get an error, okay? Now I want to read in the name. So look, the C in, you need to put the other directions of the arrows. And what I'm, where am I going to hold my stuff? In my name. And now we want to want to write out hello and look I put a space there and I'm going to concatenate my name and if I want to go down a line I need to tell again inside of quotes I'm going to do backslash n that would be to tell the compiler go down a line and now Oh, of course, 
Another thing we should add, we need to do, we need to tell him that we are using namespace std. Let's try it now. So project and build. OK. And now, if we, you see we don't have any errors, now let's run it. So there are two options to run it, and we're going to use both of them. Um, this one is basically to run it without debugging, and this one is with debugging. The difference is, well, when we want to debug to, ch to look for um, errors or trace more carefully what we do, we use debugging, and we, we don't need it, we can use this, this one. So now it's going to run, but it's going to be closed right quickly. We're going to say our name. You see well here? Should I make it bigger? Um, is it better? Do you see well? OK. So oh, it's closed. And the reason is that is because we need to put some, a, a little trick inside to make it stay up. So everybody, if you did all of that, I'm just going to add here a little function called get char, which basically going to wait for me to put some more input, another input, just so, it, so the console can close. Without that, the console will just close right away. So let's do project, build, and let's run it again. Closed again. So let's put another one. Okay, did everybody get to this to do this? Were you all able to do that? Okay, guys, great, let's move on then. Okay.